Alright. You running on cappuccino and nothing else? Alright, I'll try to keep you mildly entertained with my educational stream here. You guys let me know if the music is overpowering or not. I actually need the music to keep me not bored. So some of the stuff I got wrong last time. The EX version of the armor move, I said it was negative three on block. I heard it was negative two, so I'm gonna test that right now. So I'm gonna test that by doing it on block into a 13 frame and build a push block might fuck it up. We'll see. to a 13 frame move, right? Yeah, okay, so that is negative two, not negative three on block. I exchanged, he did a 13 frame move, I did a 15 frame move in exchange, so that is negative two. So that's a negative two on block armor move. Starts with a special mid, and then goes into mid mid. Special mid mid mid, wall splats. You can suffer cancel, obviously, if you choose. All right, so the other thing I got wrong, I saw his homing move, one of them is standing four was 14 frames, but I think it's actually 16 frames. What did I write here? Or I typed that. Did I type that here? Let me see. Standing four, 17, yeah, I wrote 14 frames here. Type that. Uh, how can I test that? But plus one, 16, 17, what is changed? Uh, plus one, 16. Do I have a 16 frame move? Like on my head. Um, well, how about this? Uh, hmm. I don't know how to test this. Uh, do I have a plus two? Plus two, plus two, plus two. Well, let's see. The bot says 16 frames. Uh, do I have plus two on block? Seven block. Uh, I have plus one, but I got jab for plus one. That's negative nine. What well, plus two on hit maybe? That's plus four. That's negative. Uh, that's plus a lot. Uh, cross jab, no. Back. There we go. Plus two. Okay. So plus two into that should exchange with a 14 frame move. Assuming everything is right, right? So I do. So that, when it hits me, should exchange with a 14 frame move. Yes, there we go. So 16 frames. When I did the math, I guess I had it backwards. I thought of it as my, I subtracted to instead of adding to like a fool. So standing four is a 16 frame high hold move, which is fine. It's still a great move. Let's save this. So 1 plus 2 is this 14 frame move. Okay, so that keeps things simple. So the recap from last time about geese, right? You got the 3 meters, max mode costs 1 meter. If you do max mode outside of a combo situation, you get a full max mode meter, which is the blue meter going on above the super meter, as you can see right now. Which uh, typically gives out about 3 EX moves. Uh, maybe 4, depending on what EX moves you use. The EX uh, moves have various uh, uses, right? The only one that I haven't found a use for yet is EX double dribble again. I don't know what good is that. But we, uh, most people already know that EX plus simple back one plus two leads to a 50-50 mid versus low jungle star, right? Versus low. Everybody knows this Four, right? So we, we know about that, right? We also know that no matter what you people have shown you on Twitter, on a standing face-to-face -face opponent, there is no way to combo the EX this, uh, sorry, the EX this into this. There are people that keep showing this off on Twitter. Even fucking Dust made a combo video showing this as a 100% combo. It's bullshit. The only thing you can do is that is basically you treat it like a recent. So you can do shit like this, uh, not like that, shit like this. And then go into a reset, a 50-50, either that or the low. 
the only time you're going to get that to combo guaranteed is on a back turn opponent, right? And this is something I learned recently. So, number one, a back turn opponent. One, two, three is a jungle starter. As you see, um, it doesn't combo on a face to face opponent, but a back turn opponent cannot escape the rest of the string. If jab hits them, the rest is guaranteed to their back. But you have to be like right up against their back, as you just saw. If I'm a little all faxes, you're going to get the spin, it's probably going to hit them on the side. But if you're truly in the back, you're gonna float them like that. You get down four, forward three, back four, four, dash up, down four, half circle, back three. So like a decent chunk of damage here. So this is 10 frame back turn punisher too. In situations like Ling Zhaoyu's um, only 65 damage, so it's not like amazing. But if you have no meter, that's what you wanna do when you punish Ling Zhaoyu's uh, California roll into the root kick, double kick. She's negative 11 back turn. 11 and 10 frame moves will hit her back turn. So that is a true punish on Ling Zhaoyu doing the California roll to the rule kick. If you have one meter though, this also becomes a 10 frame punisher. Crouch jam to forward one. That's gonna hit her in the back, like just like that. And then when you have that, then you can do this. And then that will come, and then you can jump. So if you have one meter, you have a potential when you block something like that. Do 89 damage with like a simple piss easy juggle. Maybe even more depending on what kind of juggle you do. <coughs> so that's just something I learned recently. Another thing I learned recently is down four hits Kuma grounded. So also Kuma is the uh, this low becomes a juggle starter on Kuma. The rest of the cast you're only gonna get a ground uh, throw. Ground uh, throw is of course unbreakable with yeast and adds uh, 20 damage. So 20 plus 20. 40 damage off of that low. But Kuma, you'll be able to pick him up with a crouch jab into forward three and go into whatever juggle. Uh, I haven't tested that on Gigas. Let me do that right now. Thank you very much for the donation. I appreciate it. So we go. Oh, I fucking picked double geese. I meant to pick uh, Gigas. I know on Kuma it works. So Kuma it works. And then if it works on Gigas, I want to test it on Jack. It's the only other big body that it might work on. Hit some grounded. ATL Koreans, what's up? Uh, will this go up on YouTube? It'll always go up on YouTube. So, seems like it's only cool. Man. Just in case, though, I'm gonna try it on Jack also. Actually, let me try one more thing on Gigas. Nope, too far. Alright. Just to show you guys. ATL Koreans, is that Shola? There's some other stuff I haven't tested against Kuma at the wall because down four hits him. And you know how Kuma players love to stay on the floor. Kuma's upper body's fucking weird, so you have to do different juggles to him. I don't know how to like maximize that really. It's like su it's like such a specific character, right? You have to like do Kuma specific juggle and shit. Does this work on him? No. Well, that at least the third hit connects. But yeah, so it works on Kuma. Let me just try it on Jack just in case. You never know. The reader should is that. It probably won't work though. Yeah, 
those of you who don't know, these always go up on the YouTube if you scroll down. Although it's been like three weeks since Geese came out, so I imagine most people found a lot of this shit out. But I like to try to find this shit on my own. I like to see if I can get anything unique out of it. Let's see like we can. You could go right into supper. But he recovers too slow for you to follow that with anything except maybe a instant while running one. And even then, you typically need some space between you and uh, the opponent when it connects for you to recover and then do the out running one elbow. So it probably won't work there. Alright. So now I got all that out of the way. The last move that I left off at was uh, down forward 1-1. One, one. Well, I didn't get very far. That's pretty, That's probably because the tech about wasn't working and I was still trying to figure out a lot of shit about this. Last time I looked at all this shit was day one. John, if you're still there, you having your cappuccino, I'm about to chug me a monster. I know you're probably face palming at the sound of that, but it is what it is. At, at the very least, it's the blue call, low carb monster. Forward one one and down forward one four. This is actually what I forgot. Down forward one four. What's the data on that? Negative fourteen on block. But you, as you can see, the one thing I always notice about when I get people to block this, as I've been playing geese lately, is that's a lot of pushback, right? Like the jab, the the jab tip range reaches. People tend to hesitate swinging at this move, though. It's weird. Right? So if I hold back. Oh, see? If I hold back, and I know uh, Geese can't hold forward with his ass because he has a forward one. And that's 14 frames. Ah, so that reaches. Barely. Look at that. It's like the tip of his fucking pinky. Hits him in the face. It doesn't even look like the, it's touching him. Hitbox. You know, bubbles or whatever they are in second. I guess we can sidestep it either. Okay. So this one was better than I thought. Of course you could counter. Still though. Uh, you're probably not gonna do a shit like this against Brian and Lars, because they're gonna launch you. Brian would jet up for Lars and forward back 2-1. Or Geese with meter, because he's gonna punish it with that. And so whatever, right? Wow, I didn't reach on Geese. They usually reach on Geese. Man, I gotta get a better jump. Alright. Either way it goes, the reason that's so good, obviously, is because the second hit, it checks them, uh, well, also because it checks them mid for this, the poke. Down forward 1-1, one, one, it's a lot like Heihachi's down forward 1-1. One, one. Down forward 1 by itself is only negative 1, down forward 1-1 one, one is negative 2. The cool thing about Geese, uh, Zane, how the holidays treat you? The holidays treated me pretty good. I hope the holidays have been treating you all of you very good, too. Um, so, back to this. So, the reason that negative 2... Negative 2 isn't a big deal with pretty much the whole cast. But a cool thing about Geese is he's one of the motherfuckers that could kill you. Well, not kill you, but he could hurt you really bad with a counter hit crotch jab. 10 frames. That means, uh, depending on the matchup, if you're negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and maybe even negative 4, depending on the matchup. It's totally cool to, once in a while, check them with a crouch jab into forward 1. Because on counter hit, the combo, right? And depending on if you want to burn meter or not, you can't really counter hit confirm and then burn meter. I don't think you can. No. 
you can't verify the second hit connecting and then burn your meter. So if you want to go into max mode, you got to go into max mode, right? Like you got to preemptively go into max mode. And where I think you should confirm, try to confirm is that second hit on max mode. By the time you do the max mode auto run, you should verify, confirm that you, if you connected the second hit and then react accordingly. Because if they blocked the second hit, then you're only plus two. So if you just like keep swinging with shit like you know standing too, you get interrupted. Either way it goes, uh, you're not gonna eat anything too crazy, uh, any crazy mids exchange wise. Crush wise, you're gonna get crushed by hot kicks, obviously. So you know be careful with that stuff. But if you start swinging with a crouch jab at like negative three, at negative four, there's uh, at negative four there's only a few characters with like counter hit juggle starting mids that are that fast, like Claudio. Claudio's down forward too, which is like this quick little mid punch that Roger, I think, used to have. I don't know if it was 14 frames for Roger, but it is 14 frames for Claudio. So be careful in situations like that. But a lot of the cast, they tend to have, uh, as far as counter hit mid hitting jumbo starters go, they tend to start at 15 frames. Not always, but a big chunk. Let's put it that way. So, But in general, between negative one to negative three, you can always have a crouch that forward one in the back of your mind. And if you don't want to go into fo the forward one series, you could just do crouch that into forward three because that combo is also a counter hit, but it's a lot less rewarding. You watch Aris. Uh, I, I always feel like Aris has a tendency to overuse this, and I'm like, fuck, so many missed opportunities because he lands a lot of co uh, counter hit crouch jabs, and you can turn that into a lot more damage if you just go into other shit. Of course, you could also go into the mix up, the, you know, into the middle versus below. And if you burn one meter, you can get that much. 52 damage, just like that, burning one meter. And you still have some maximal left over. How much do you have left over? Let's see. Look at that. I still have enough for two maximal moves. I can run and do that, is that. Basically, when you have max mode, of course, when you have max mode. That turns into a plus four on block, low crushing launcher. Sorry, I know. Messing with my phone. Uh, yeah, so of course. This, that turns basically into an orbital heal that is plus four on block when you have maximum. And burn it with an EX fire. Otherwise, it's still safe if you just do it by itself, but it's like negative, what, nine or eight? Negative five. Wow. I didn't realize it was that good. Can you get? Oh, no, let me see. At least you're not drinking pre-workout with meth in it. What the fuck? True story. <laughs> All right, take it easy, John. Thanks for. Uh, my friend John works in the gym. You gotta tell me about that story next time I talk to you. But anyway, can you get a half circle back three off of the counter? Yeah, oh, yeah, you sure can. Uh, I might be coming into Tekken 7 sometime soon, and I was curious. Thoughts on Huarong and Feng Wei? I used to love Huarong back in Tekken 4. Well, uh, Feng will be the easier character to learn if that's your priority. If that's not your priority and you just want to learn who you want to learn. Uh, Huarong is definitely a lot more complicated than Feng Wei, but Feng Wei does have some complex stuff, too. They're both, like, above average difficulty, in my opinion. Um, so the thing about it is... When you get used to using both characters, you might fall into some bad habits. Because if you care about getting good in the long run, you might over fall into some bad habits with the cat with the, with both characters. In the case of Huanang, you might end up with too many buttons when you maybe shouldn't be. Because a lot of people, myself included, I kind of forgot how to fight against uh, Huanang. Uh, I did look through his move list like months ago, back in the summer. If you scroll down to my YouTube, I did like a two-parter, and I think it's a total of like 15 hours, something crazy, not 15, but it's like eight hours or something crazy like that two four hour streams or some shit um Wadong is basically gonna carry you a lot further because a lot of people have trouble fighting him when you learn how to frame wise how to go in between his stances and strings and shit feng wei is gonna uh get you by by having a lot of built-in defense into his offense a lot of feng wei's moves move him around in weird ways he has the fucking sabaki with the parting cloud shit the wing chung shit you know, he's got like a bunch of backswing blows. He has the back tempo septums, creates a ton of fucking space for easy with punishes, shit like that. They're both really good guys. They're 
They're both uh, Sonic characters. Just pick whoever you have fun with. Alright, so now 4 1 1, 18 damage. Plus 4, now 4 1, plus 7. So basically, you, you go to mid point. Now 4 1. And I already know, up close, now 4 1, tracks to your left side. See here. They go right, your left side. Wow. Did I forget something or did I do this wrong? I feel like I did this wrong. Oh, no, wait. Oh, it's one of those. Oh, it's one of those. Okay. It's not reliably track. It's one of those weird ones where if I delay it, even a, like just a little bit, it catches him. If he were to walk it, though, he probably gets around. No, he does. Man, AI is so fucking weird with this shit. Let me record it on myself. I think that's what I did last time. Alright, it's a tight window, so it doesn't really track super reliably, but it definitely. It definitely. Has a little bit of tracking. I want to use it as a tracker. Lucky for your geese players, he has two fantastic homing moves. And uh, you don't have to rely on homing moves to track, of course. Like always, you can just add a little sidestep, hold forward for a second, or not even for a second, or something. Hold forward for like a frame. Just delaying it isn't enough. You have to do something that realigns. Holding forward constantly realigns. Holding forward constantly realigns. You see? So it makes all your linear moves track. For him to stop that, he would have to sidestep right, cancel the sidestep, and then sidestep right again to get around like the late offense. Thanks for the follow, uh, Zane. So always remember that. You don't have to, it doesn't have to always be about. The homie moves. Although the homie moves in the case of Geese are really fucking good. Down forward two, safe on block mid, counter hit juggle starting, wall splatting on normal hit, homie move. And that's pretty fast. What is it, 18 frames? Well, that's not really fast, but that's a buy. Um, and then standing four, of course, for 16 frames. Uh, knockdown on normal hit, only negative three on block. You can totally size the back of this shit. And then, of course, on, on um, counter hit, you get a jump. Do I have a playlist for the music? Hold on. Uh, I don't know how to link the playlist. To the I do. It's in my channel. I don't know how to link my playlist. Hold on one second. I got you. Maybe this will work. Try that. So yeah. No problem. <coughs> so yeah, down forward one one. I should uh tracks inconsistent. <laughs> okay, save that. You can't duck the down forward one one after you block the first hit. So if I put stand guard, crouch, of course. Crouch and guard, you'll see. See, you can duck that, and then that's what the down forward one four is about to. <coughs> On top of, of course, being a counter hit. Counter hit check. The thing about it is, if they were to try to punish the down forward one one, at least with something other than the wall standing four, if they want to get something big, they'd have to like duck and swing. It's and uh, that will open them up to, for the down forward one four. The window to punish something like a down four one one, pretty tight. I generally bad at it. See, especially for Keys, because he has to do full cross down four one. I basically have to like, without confirming that you did the high, I had to input the crouch. 
the case of that, though, I can pump sharp, I can confirm that you did the high, and then come up with a wild standing form. But if I want to launch you, I have to open myself up to being counter hit by the floor. Input is My input was too slow. Check. Good moves, good moves, good moves. Alright, let me type this up here. Oh yeah, down four plus one four also combos on counter hit. Knock back wall splat. That second hit was so strong. Actually, it makes sense. That's like some of the higher damage that he gets off of his juggles when that specific mid counter hits. That's some of the highest damage, but like without you know burning meter and shit. Okay, so what I was talking about, Don Forward 2 doubles up as a um, tailspin for juggles, of course. Just like Standing 4. Does the same damage as Standing 4 in the case of juggles 2. So 17 damage, 17 damage. So if you do like, you know, if you go right into them like I tend to do, you're gonna get the same damage. 31 damage, 31 damage. Negative 5 on block, which is way better than I thought it would be, considering everything else, but it is. 18 frames is kind of slow. If this, if this homie move had the exact same properties, except it were 16 frames, I bet you it would be negative 12 on block. So, negative 5. You're probably not going to be able to sidestep jabs. Or, for example, in a negative 5 situation, my down forward one is going to hit you. Hit you for sure. Maybe in both directions. So like if I record it, I probably could record that better. See, so no jab. Ah, he gets around the 15 frame move. 14 frame move. That was a good track that I've ever played. How about that? Yeah. 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 Uh, see now because now we start to get into the rule set of if the if I'm swinging to my right side, you don't want to go towards that side. So could sidestep, but and you know the punishment in the in the geese matches specifically, the punishment for getting hit out of your sidestep is not that crazy, unless it's this or it's back three, which might work in both directions. Fourteen frames. Negative 5 is a lot better than I thought, so not too bad. Tailspin. Uh, well, 
kind of has course, but kind of implies that already. Okay. Uh, okay, these, these strings. I'm still not sure about how to work with these. These kind of, these seem like whatever. These seem like there's more options. They got not forward three, four, not forward three by itself. So now, oh, only oh, negative two. I know. And it is a 15 frame look. Alright, better than I thought it would be. Okay, so that's negative 13. So the low is negative 13. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I for <laughs> you could go into that shit. Okay. negative two but you're spaced better you're still kind of spaced here at negative two you still make a lot of shit with if you backdash after it right like why well, would you try to be like oh he's negative two let me swing right frame gap in there. Let me make sure I didn't delay that. I don't know if you can delay that or not. It's kind of a weird move. Yeah. So it came out even slower, so you can delay it. Knockback. I don't think there's any unique properties to that shit. This knocks back for 16 damage. Nothing crazy. And it's negative 13. That's what makes you think it's kind of whatever. I think you can get that to combo. Um, you can 
that's a 10 frame punish if you want to burn meter. Uh, yeah, these picks seem kind of... I mean, they're down 4-3 by itself, it's okay, I guess. The fact that that is like 13 frames, shit, that's too much. Negative 12, wait, what? Negative 13, so spacing, huh? How did I space it to get negative 12? Maybe that was an angle thing? Whatever. So how big is the other castle? Uh, gap in the other castle? Wow, I'm trying to down for one and crouch jabbing. This is one of those where, because of the way I recover, Well, oh, he's exchanging with a 12 frame move. Well, that's the gap, I guess. 12 frame. There's a high force. on the move list like this, but I guess it makes sense because his cross shot is unique. You can cancel out of it. Uh, not much to say about a cross shot. Special man, like always. That's why it's green. Good low period. I think it's interesting that um, that is negative three. It's basically the same property as that. And of course, that bounces them off the wall if you're anywhere near the wall. Down two is an underappreciated move. Negative three on hit, 14 frame high crush. And I think it's only negative 13 on block. No, negative 14. So matchup dependent. You're not gonna want to do this against characters that can launch you on block. But <clears throat> start with 14 frame. Pretty damn good. And it's very fast start. Solid round ender, and of course it hits ground. <laughs> I mean, of course they're a combo, but in general it hits grounded, and when it hits grounded, it kind of floats them up, which is kind of unique, actually. Now I think about it. All right. Or well, maybe not in that situation. Is it, it's when you're near the wall that it floats them. Okay, it, it's only in the combo situation that it pulls like that. Of course, down three. Alright, so this only combos on counter hit, but the other cool thing about down three, what's down three? Basically, 15 frame low, you can treat it as a low poke, because it's only negative two. On, um, on the hit. On counter hit, same thing, nothing special uh, frame data wise when talking about the low by itself. It's not bad. 15 frame high crushing low, negative two, crouch guard. So here's the thing about this oh, it's only negative 12. One frame slower than this, negative 12. I know it also hits grounded. Uh, wow, maybe I underappreciated this. But the cool thing about this is, if they try to block punish it, you have to crouch jab. The cool thing about that is, the crouch jab is just like his regular crouch jab, in that if the crouch jab counter hits, it comes to forward one. Right? What's up happening is, Uh, you really like to fish with this for a bit, kind of poke at people and shit. If they don't low parry and they low block and they try to punish it, that's what happens. 
Like, oh, let me try to punch it with a lost standing four. And then they eat the crowd jab and then all of that combo. But there's more to it. There's also the fact that on counter hit, it, it, uh, it combos a counter hit. The down three and the one combos a counter hit. And just like the regular one, you combo with the quarter circle back to one. It's, uh, that's a counter hit combo. That's not as good as the other stuff, really. Because the thing is, once again, just like usual, there's not really any visual. It's not really a, there's no visual confirmation for counter hits. It's not like Speed Fighter where you can look for the counter hit uh, word to pop up on the screen. Like you can attack on a super if you choose, and you've got 60 damage, just like that. Maybe more, I don't know. It's a 15 frame decent low poke. One that I've underappreciated. For sure. Next, down four, the big one. Alright. Now, if you want to think about the fact that Geese is like a 2D character, and like, think about, oh, how do you chip away at people in second? Well, the way people consider chip damage in second is low pokes, right? Fast low pokes. Now, there is literal chip damage in this game. Obviously, that's right. See? It does like what? One damage. And one damage, right? You should use one, one, one. Three damage. Uh, the only way you could actually chip kill is with a silver, like with the same thing that's happening in many uh, 2D fighting areas. That's five chip, and the other one is. I think that was like 35. Okay, so uh, both supers chip for 5 damage and the super is chip kill. There is also obviously chip in like certain uh, rage drives that push you against the wall on block like Steve's and Feng and Paul uh, and Leo's, whatever. So, if you really think about like, oh, in a, in a 2D fighter you could typically block screen people because, you know, block screen will keep your frame matches into chip over and over again, kind of. Uh, you can't really do that here, but if you were to consider lows to be chip, you could think about this as, like, Geese's primary chip move down four. Because if you start his pressure, right, with foot cancel to forward three, he can't combo on normal hit into anything, even if he burns meter, he can't combo. He's plus 15, but it's a fake plus 15. Because they can block. I don't even know if that plus 15 is right, but he's plus a lot after he cancels that. Frame base, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> His 20 frame mid beat out my standing, that 10 frame standing. So he's uh, definitely above plus, plus 15, is probably right. But it's the plus 15 that you can still guard there. The dude that asked about Huarang, Huarang has a lot of this going on too. He puts himself at like plus 10, plus 15. Josie also. But they can still block. No, one off does have one card, legitimate card. So anyway, uh, my recommendation is if you're standing at around this range, let's say, yeah, if you're standing at the tip range of down four, don't go too much into down four, forward three, because the problem with that is it's only gonna do anything if you get the counter hit on down four. The thing about the counter hit down four is. Combo out of it, I think, from Max Fist. That. Maybe not. Well, even if you can't combo out of it from Max Fist, the thing about it is. You can at least get a fucking. Bro. Use me. Huh. 
this is it, okay? Alright, so at the tip range, you can't get it. I thought it might be a uh, merit to using it by itself like that because I saw Bloodhawk playing a few days ago. He was doing a lot of like down four by itself. But now seeing that at the tip, you can't get anything. Uh, it's like the super tip. Alright, now maybe it is pretty reliable now. That I Yeah, it seems to be like a bit of an axis thing. So at the super, super tippy tip range, you're not going to be able to do much or anything. Maybe a Repuka. Point being though, if you're fishing for this and you're like, you get a little too greedy with it because of the range, you're going to run into situations where it's going to whip. The forward three is going to whip. Also, in general, you don't want to follow this up every single time anyway because it makes you more predictable. So you're kind of like landing a lot of down forwards and chipping away at them to start your pressure. It's like, it's weird because it's like, it's a sweet KOF sense. Uh, he could cancel out of it, but only on hit, not on block. On block, it's always like negative, really bad. <laughs> Negative 31. Is that right? Oh boy, that's pretty bad. So yeah, as you can see, it's pretty bad, right? Um, it's really bad on block, and he cannot cancel out of it with anything including a super on block. But, uh, he's gonna call some chip card either way. See? Unlike this. Not that. Which off that could be made safe on block because of what I just did. Safe. Not only safe on block, that makes it plus one on block. And if the low were to hit me, it combos. Right in the ass. 49 damage. So that's another thing worth noting. You fight against a geese and you think and you see they have two meters and they're going into that. And you guess low, consider low pairing instead of low block. Either way it goes, down four is one of his most important moves. But like, it's kind of one of those live by the sword, die by the sword, depending on how much you rely on it. It's important, but that doesn't mean that you have to rely on it. Remember that, if they start ducking the forward three, so they do forward one, and then the forward one will hit them, and then you can get you can combo out of them. You also do like this the forward one and do that. I wouldn't recommend in that situation really doing that though. But still, uh, or you could just do down four by itself. The thing about down four by itself is it's negative five, but it does push back a bit. So if you're fishing for it from the tip range, like I was uh, kind of suggesting. Maybe not even to tip range, but a little bit closer than the tip range. You're, you're going to be spaced out pretty well, even though you're negative uh, five. You're going to be spaced out quite well. If they swing at all, you open it, they open themselves up to getting whiff punches, whatever. Whew. So there's that. But that shit is death on block, and I just realized I forgot to test the tracking on four. Could be that now. Okay. So 
Oh, it tracks to his right pretty well. That's interesting. Huh? Oh, man. I love how great lures are in tracking. That's that's been a thing for a while now, but it's good to see. Okay. So down three, as it should, tracks to his left. Down two tracks in both directions. Fast side, 17 frames, that's pretty good, speed wise. So the whole thing about Geese is, um, you know, he has all these really good lows, but then it becomes, what about his mids? Well, his mids aren't super threatening. He has this, but it's slow, super slow. That doesn't mean he shouldn't use it. It's slow, it's slow enough that it'll catch people off guard, unless you use it too much, right? run into people that like to delay their offense, which you can totally condition people to do with Geese, because he has down four, one, sidestep three. You know, down four, sidestep three, down four, and fast low folks in general. And of course, crouch uh, jab. You can condition people to delay their offense, and when you do that, that kind of opens them up to slower things sometimes, like that. But yeah, so... Without meter, what I was getting at is he doesn't have like a super threatening mid. With meter, of course, he has that. Which you can hit confirm if you're sharp. It's only hit confirm if you're sharp. You see that? Like, I'm delaying that after the knee. So you can practice hit confirming that to make that even better. Sweet on that. That's a 14 for mid. The knee by itself is negative. The knee by itself is negative nine. Alright. Either way it goes, top four is the one of the big cornerstones of Jesus' offense. Paul Phoenix best. I already went to Paul Phoenix for this in my life. So of course, on counter hit, you can do this. And a dash deeper for that. A counter hit you could do is down four forward three, down four forward three, back four four, dash, down four, half circle back three, you got dash deep though. And uh, if you just want a ton of wall carry, you could do a rep pookin instead, which carries further, or dash up back three. Uh, back three two. That's a lot of uh, carry. You could also maximum cancer in the end there. And uh, down four Repukin for wall carry too. He just got that. Whatever. You can play around with it, but in general, just down four forward three, down four forward three twice. Back four four, dash up, down four, half circle back three. Or you could dash up two, uh, two forward one, core circle back one. I think that works. White. Yeah, that's tough to do. 
Uh, also, the thing about when you dash up into a two like that, you have to dash up, let the stick go to neutral, and then hit two because he has. You're gonna get a run up into a forward two instead. You don't want that. So that's why I suggest you just dash up into a down four or whatever. Instead of all that other bullshit, right? Next, we have the slow low. 24 frame startup. 20 damage. And you get a free ground throw attempt. This shit is, of course, death on block. Negative 18. Yes, you are sure. Negative 18 on block. I don't know if that's any tracking. I don't know if that's true tracking or just that it's so slow that it hits them. Tracks are his right side pretty well, as it looks like it should. As long as you're up close, it seems. If you're like kind of spaced out, then it, it just whiffs. If you're right in their face, oh wow. I can't tell that's pushing in the back. Uh, Alright, that's some, a bit of weird tracking up close, but not consistent. Like, I would not, I probably wouldn't call that, like, really a right side tracker. It's slow anyway, so I think it's a side step of Duck Block. Um, it is kind of seeable. 24 frame startup. If people are sharp, they'll see it, so don't use it too much as like a mix up tool. It'll get you killed. I think that's a down plus one plus two. So yeah. Um, like I said uh, earlier on Kuma, they come up with a cross shaft forward three, and then combo him. Uh, on everybody else, you can't really do much except for ground throw. Uh, against the wall though, you could do a down two, raising storm. Maybe in this game you can do it too. to the wall and you do this they slam against the wall and then the rage don't work. But you could go right into a second. That counts. What can they can do about that? There is also weird shit you can do if people hold back to get up. Uh, like that that kind of weird shit happens. That that's gonna hit them if they hold back to get up. Deck up course and stay down and roll. It's not gonna work. So yeah, basically, they have no reason to hold up though because it, it's a guaranteed ground throw. And even then, there's no like mix up there. You get the guaranteed ground throw, or you don't do the ground throw and you go for some bid. It's basically you're playing off of their ignorance. But you could totally use that as a pocket sand strat if you want to get cute with your opponent. Kind of kind of keep that in your back pocket. Throw it out at them. 
but it's not like a true mix-up kind of thing, you know? Like, you're gonna get nothing special for them staying down. It's not like it's Marduk where when he gets the ground grab, he tosses them into the air and then you do a jump. You just get the ground slam that you would have always gotten. Or a super, which you could have gotten anyway. Next is back one two, which is his 12 frame punisher, right? 12 frame punisher, which is only cuts four, but good damage. I think it's a safe form block, isn't it? Oh, that's unusual. This is negative seven. Usually this kind of like 12 frame high mid, decent damage move is um, unsafe. This is safe. I feel like that's unusual. Anyway. Uh, the second hit causes that to happen. Can they hold back? Second counter hit. They can't. Oh, he gets guaranteed shit on the second hit. Interesting. I didn't know this. Another move that goes on you. You can probably combo that if you're fast enough. Uh, 56 down. Otherwise, just go for back two, I guess. Alright, I gotta use that move more often. I did not know that that was safe and that you fish for a counter hit. Counter hits by doing the back one by itself. Is the back one worth doing by itself? Negative seven. Eh. Super risky, but you could. I guess you could swing after that with a crowd shaft. Or you could duck for a moment and then stand, maybe. Because the thing about this kind of move is, like I said, a lot of people will probably think this is jab punishable if they don't know. They don't know, duck for a second and then launch them if they jab it. Go back to just like before. Negative three on block. Let me see the tracking on that. No tracking on that. Uh, yes, it's one of those where you have to keep stepping or swing fast to not eat the second hit. Oh man, can't step that at all. What? Wait, what? Why are you getting hit by that? Fucking AI. The way it inputs this stuff is not reliable. What the fuck? It's actually happened to me too. Wow, it blows you up for sidewalking but not stepping? Weird. Oh, you can get around the back if you go the other way, though. If you go to your left. If you go to your right, you gotta stop. You try to walk, it's gonna catch your ass. I already know it has no problem. Uh, people know about this move already. Negative three on block sends people flying away on hit. If they, the wall is anywhere near them while they're flying away, they're gonna bounce off the wall and then you can do whatever goofy shit for a wall combo. But you have to re-splat them basically. Hit them with standing four, re-splat them against the wall and then do whatever. Of course we have this. This is uh, the 14 frame move. This is a super bad on block. So if you don't have any meter, and you 
you don't hit confirm this move, it's negative 15. You're gonna get launched by most of the cast. Just the track. Tracks to my left side quite well. Okay. I ain't know that. Good shit. Nice to have. And it is a knee, so most counters will not work. Parries, for the most part, will work like Jin's. And of course, Geese's counter, because it's special, is going to work. Quite well to his left side. Good point. Not too far. That's back 4-4. Four, four. And of course, that's really only like a homing up oh, now. Sorry. Core screw for juggles. I want to use his outside of juggles. Spins. Did, that'd be a really good low, right? So, counter and combos. It is only negative three, but he has no mid extension. And uh, the second hit does cause that to happen for a nice chunk of damage. How much damage is that? Why is that? Sidewalk, you'll get around it, but sidestep left, it's probably gonna clip you. No rule track. Uh, just follows the general tech and limb rule, I guess. That's about it. While running one. So back four, I mean, I guess you could kind of, back four, four, I guess you could kind of every once in a blue moon use it outside of juggles. I don't know, I don't think I would recommend it though. Because there's no, there's no great reward for hitting the down four and pestering them with that sort of low. It doesn't crush, it's slow at 19 frames. If you're going to do that kind of shit, the sidestep three is much better. It's going to leave you at plus six. Right. Did I cover sidestep three last time? Is that coming up? I think that's coming up. Okay, that's coming up. So while running one, it's a decent move. It's one of those where if people try to sidestep, you can like, you know, add a little extra step to it. Uh, 26 damage, decent damage, and it's safe on block. It's one of those 15 frame while running moves, uh, like Kazumi's and Dragonos, but it's not as good. It's uh, easier to sidestep than those in general. Instead of eight on block, no counter hit properties. Uh. I think if you're gonna step it, you're gonna wanna go left. Yeah, see, you do get his rear. And it is negative eight without really any pushback. Like Kazumi's does a ton of pushback on block. He 
stasis doesn't really do anything. They stole the jab range. So it's nowhere near like as good as Zillius. But it is a nice move to have to throw out every once in a while just to check people moving around a bit too much. Uh, it's also nice to tack on to certain uh, combo enders. It's a nice move to have, but it's not good. I always like having a good move that you can threaten with a mid when you approach people so it opens up run up into like that. So you know they won't duck it properly. Especially since that naturally comes out since that's a back uh, input, back plus one plus two, running up into it like that. Kind of like KOF. In KOF, when you run up, if you want to do a regular throw on people, you run up and press back plus the input because uh, throws a proximity, just like a super turbo where you hold forward and walk toward them and press punch or kick. So when you run, if you were if you were to run in KOF and press punch or kick, you would just do a close normal. So the way you would run up and throw is you would run and press back plus a, a kick or punch. Heavy kick or heavy punch. Right? So here, it's kind of interesting that they made that his command grab, basically. So you do that out of a run, seamlessly. Just like KOF. I don't know if they had thought about it that way, but that's the way I'm thinking about it. While rising one, he could cancel this, but the only thing that he could combo with is quarter circle back one. So this is his 13 frame punch. While standing one, quarter circle back one. And then, of course, you can add attack on the silver. 56 damage, right? Still tag on the slipper for 56 damage at least. It might wall spy depending on how close you are to the wall. Uh, that of course by itself will wall spy 27 damage, but no matter what, even if it's counter hit, you get nothing else. Nothing. Uh, this by itself is plus three. Plus three doesn't matter. You could also use this as a way just to go into the chain and start all that shit. We want to get greedy. Really. I already verified it doesn't really track. Like if I put myself out as negative three. I have side stuff. If this were like a good tracking move, negative three should not be enough, you know. Should not be a factor in the side stuff, so. While standing two is a hit throw. If you're gonna do it, input forward plus two. Forward plus two? I don't even know why they show while standing two by itself. Like, yeah, like, what's the purpose? Let's do shit by itself. Just mash it. So it's like fishing the slab. Cobble out of it. Too slow. Too slow again. Damn, I'm having trouble doing a run up to a phone. I can't believe Shit. Shit. How can I not time this? Trying to find a way so you don't have to time this. You do have to run up. You have to run up into something. Oh, you get to do a standing four. Actually. You don't want to time it? Yeah. Just do mass standing four, down forward two. Oh, down forward two, you know, if you match it, I'm gonna get it. If you do standing four, you can match that. No, you can't match that out. You do have to time it either way. That's nice. So there's no really easy way out of this. Kinda, it's not hard to do, but you do have to time it. Uh, 
cards with the forward three, back four, forward three. Oh yeah, that is Okay. Uh, it doesn't. That kind of combo would usually work, but I guess it's because it's his head toward. It whips like that. Oh wow, that shit was sick. It always gets weird when the head is full. Of course, you could also just do a side switch if you're faster than I am. That's why I don't do that kind of shit, really, but whatever. So yeah, I like your idea with the forward three, back four four. Because that you can mash. I like I like like recommending so you can just kinda of mash. And then you do the fancier shit later. The duel works first. Uh while standing three, this is basically kinda of like another variation of standing four. Except it's not a homing move, but it does everything else. It does actually track really well though, despite not being a homing move. As you can see. Sidestep right, goes to the left. Plus I'm going to third. Okay. And of course, combo star. Same damage too as the homing move. So uh, it, I pretty much treat it like a homing move, I don't know. Uh, 15 frames instead of uh, 16. So this is actually not a bad move, even though it's kind of rare to have a high out of wall standing. That is kind of unusual. But still. That's pretty much your way from crouching to get people to not move. Not much else to say about that. Put it on block. And it is negative three, just like standing four. <laughs> negative three. So it's like a it's like a standing four that's one frame faster and the game does not consider it a homie. That's pretty much what that move is by standing three. Both cross that for one. All right, so that's his 15 frame launch for dunking. Unusual input for me. The only other character I know of that does shit like this for a launcher is Steve. I'm sure there's more, but I don't really know. It's not too many. You can do whatever. The same juggles you always do, you could do it out of this. You don't have to do anything fancy. You can't do. All right. So the rule, the general rule of thumb is, if you do the down four forward three series, post launch. Right here. Uh, you cannot get back for four if you do four hits post launch. If you do three hits post launch, for example, counter hit down four, right? If I go into forward three, that's three hits. So it works, right? Because the four connects, and then one, two, three, four, five. However, if I were to do. Do that. See? And now I'll try to do it. It's not gonna work. So, because of that, that's why I like to just do tail spin right out of that. Oh. 58 damage, or you know, we don't have to do that. 55 damage, or something. Like that. So you can just play around do 55 damage, 55, 58 damage. You're not going to get much more. Geese is generally low damage without meter. When he burns meter, that's when he starts to... Off of juggles, at least. That's when one meter starts to get him at your average character damage off of juggles. And then when he starts adding in slippers, that's when his damage starts to really get crazy. But not, not Akuma crazy. <laughs> Never Akuma crazy. Side step three. This is the fucking granddaddy of low pokes for geese. This is a really good low poke. It's slow because it's 19 frame startup and you have to sidestep first. 
but generally, the thing is, when people start to see that, oh, you got this sidestep low poke, it had decent range for some more. Pretty decent range, you know, not amazing. Especially depending on, like, how, how your access aligns with the opponent. But still. Plus six on hit, keeps him honest, keeps him still. And uh, in a plus six on hit situation, I'm gonna be surprised at the way he can do Like, down forward one is probably gonna keep him stuck after that. Yeah, if he can't go left with the down forward one after that, then you, you know you, they're stuck. Um, and on counter hit, you can sort of combo, sort of not depending on the character. It gets weird. Really we're in a meet. See? I've heard that some people found ways to combat this semi consistently. Here's my recommendation. No, not even that. Shit. Rep Or, you might have to delay that, actually. And you gotta delay that. Down for Rep Hookah. Until you start to get used to, like, the, the specific intricacies of that, I wouldn't recommend getting crazy. Still do this. You can follow that with a wild running one, but that is still there as an option. The thing about this, down four to four one, is it doesn't work on every character. Geese is kind of a bulky person. The small character ain't gonna get perfect. See? At, at that angle, I was able to actually combo the core circle back too. That didn't work in other angles. Oh, also, if you hit on the side, you don't get the counter attack. See? It went there. That's the problem with this. It's a sidestep move, so it's going to force you out of alignment already as it is, for the most part. So when you counter hit, you have no real way, consistent way of telling what angle they're going to be at. Oh, is that what people say is doing? See, but then it didn't work when I went left, it didn't work. When I go right, though. Yeah, see? It's all sorts of fucking weird shit, and then it's gonna be character dependent on top of that. So, uh, KISS, keep it simple, stupid. Down forward, people. The jump ins. Not even gonna fucking bother. His jump ins suck. You could, like, if you're gonna jump in with something, make it jumping for him. The uh, other stuff, like, if there is anything going on with them, it's gonna be, like, angle specific. The only thing is, he has his classic uh, Fatal Fury or KOF jumping C, jumping high punch, which is the, <laughs> the palm first. Fury does two. It'd be nice if you were able to air cancel to a fireball, but he can't do that. It's kind of what happens. Also, like, if you land it too high, you may be plus on, you know, plus on it, but you're not gonna combo. So you gotta land on your way down. See? You get the idea. 
none of them track, unfortunately. I will say shit can. It's pretty good. It is unsafe on block. If you do it up close. Even if you do it off of this. That's unsafe. But they have to chase your ass down to punish that. They have on the back. Oh my, I had last There it is. See, punish. So, if you want to punish that, you, you have to be fucking sharp and chase his ass down instantly. The moment you recover from block, you gotta chase his ass down. Alright, let's that. But yeah, um, obviously, if you've seen Aris, you already know. You can do a e it's an EX Air Fireball. And the thing about his EX Air Fireball is he lands. He lands, like, right after he shoots it. He goes straight down to the floor. So the lower to the floor you are, the better. I don't know how to do that instant air trick. Weird. one of the things I gotta practice and if you're playing geese you're gonna wanna practice that too. It's an air EX fireball. That's a big one. And if we got taunt, nothing fancy about that. Come on. Uh, we got his throws. I believe he gets unique stuff at the wall with this one, but there's no mid-stage Oki because they're all the way across the screen. Uh, the two throws. Turn on, wake up. Fifteen frame low exchanges. That's a bad look. Exchanges with 14 frames to make wake up. Oh, and he can't do the duck trip. If he ducks, the mid's gonna cash him. So you gotta hold down back. You can't low parry. If you try to low parry, you're gonna get clipped. That's the negative 12 wake up low kick. So, yeah. You can't really punish him hard, so your Oki's kind of whatever. But you are safe to duck with down back. If you try to down forward for low parry, you're gonna get hit by the hit. Maybe if you delay it, I don't know. Yeah, maybe you could do it. You gotta be careful of how you hit put the low parry. It's not as easy and natural as it is off of the, 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 the ground, but for whatever reason, 
Even though that is the exact same grab animation. Pretty much, right? <laughs> Did I just see that right? Hold on a second. Okay, this is with it, naturally. I guess pretty similar rule set, but it just seems like the low parry OS is a little bit more strict than it is with the ground grab. That's it. Uh, man grab, of course, mid stage, you get nothing, but at the wall, you get some stuff. And then the counters. High counter, you get the slam. Mid counter, you get the side switch parry. Combo with 15 frames or faster. So if you got 14 frames, one meter, you can do back three, two, burn the meter, juggle, or do standing two into whatever. Uh, and the low counter is a juggle starter, instant tailspin, instant corkscrew. It also works versus crouch jabs. It's the only way you can counter crouch jabs, actually. If I do the mid counter. Counter becomes a high enemy counter. Does not burn any extra meter. Otherwise, the high counter does not counter me. In general, the wall combo tends to be that. Down for 1-1, one, one, standing to double or pooping, but if you want better recovery, you know, single rip pooking with sets of that or that. Not a true mix-up because they're both slow moves. Uh, if they stay down, you could... Um, oh, you stay down. Let's see. Stay down and they happen to be in EX mode.
20, it's the same damage, that's great. Okay, yeah, so it's gonna have circle back three. Or we'll have circle back four. But if they stay down and you happen to have EX meter, you always have that option. You could probably do crazier shit to like Kuma or whatever. But regular size characters, you could do the jumping backwards to uh, silver, uh, Tiger Knee. Down to up back. One plus two. Oh, oh, that wasn't it. Because you want some time before it hits the ground. <laughs> thing is, if they wake up kick you, it's not going to be a big deal, especially if it's a low, because you're going to jump over it anyway. Fucking hell. I can't do it all the time. I did this during a fucking match, and I can't do it during training mode. I swear to God, I did this during a match with somebody. <laughs> and I was surprised, because it was the only time I tried it. In, like, the whole set. I've played this guy, like, 30 times. So it's doable, you just gotta... Fireball's more damage. I didn't realize that. I don't think you get anything guaranteed after that. something about this, like if you're off axis... Yeah, if you're off axis you can get them splat like that. crashed on me. <laughs> I'll probably call it there anyway because it's so fucking late. Alright. The message even pop up on the... On the uh, second couldn't handle it. Oh well. Second has stopped working. I'm gonna call it there for the night anyway because it's 3.10am uh, a.m. and I gotta do some shit tomorrow. Um, I want to record like... Uh, I want to start when I do these record a separate, you know, I'm gonna upload this like usual to the YouTube, and then I want to record like a separate, like, half hour or less run through for people who just want to pick up the character and where to start, instead of going into all the fancy shit, right? I want to give that a shot. I don't know, I wanted to do it on stream, but it's like, I don't have any really, really have any viewers, so I might just record it on my own on the side. Oh, whatever. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good night and Feliz Navidad.